Income tax 2023-2024. Business expenses, bad debts. Get ready and some coffee because to be a great tax preparer, you got to be like a scarecrow outstanding in your field. Otherwise, like a raven, the IRS will come and eat your lunch. Most of this information can be found in Publication 334, Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Income, the sole proprietorship schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula, which is a little funny because the schedule C itself is basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses, which you can also call business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls in from the Schedule C to line one income of the formula. The formula basically supporting the calculation behind page one of the 1040 that we see here, Schedule C, ultimately rolling into line eight, additional income from Schedule one. Here is a Schedule 1, Additional Income and Adjustments to Income, Part Number 1, Schedule C, roll it into Line 3, Business Income or Loss. Here is the Schedule C, Business or Loss from Business or Profit. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know. That CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com or laws from business, which has an income statement format, income minus expenses. We talked in a prior presentation about the idea of this expense category, which is going to be our point of focus for some time, remembering that in an income statement, in an income tax system, the expenses are a natural type of thing that you would expect to be deductible for an income tax. Those things that are ordinary and necessary in order to help us to generate the revenue, those expenses basically being the business deductions. They're also the largest category. There are the most different kinds of things typically in the expenses side of things. Therefore, they have the most variance, most complexity because of the diversity of things and certain accounts being more complex than others. So we'll spend some time focusing in on expenses. This time looking at the bad debts. Now, when you hear the term bad debts, it kind of seems like, well, are there any good debts? Debt in and of itself is typically thought of as bad. But when we're talking about bad debts here for a business, we're typically thinking about people owing us money and not able to pay us the money. That's why it's a bad debt. So in other words, this usually happens when we make sales on account, which will be dependent upon whether or not we're in a business where we have to track accounts receivable typically. So the types of businesses that we have, for example, we could have one, a cash-based kind of system, 
where, for example, we do the work at the same point in time and get paid at that point in time, like a food truck or a restaurant. Or we might have a type of business where we have to do the work first and then collect the money later, like a bookkeeping business often is set up, in which case we do the work and then we send out the invoice. The invoice increases the accounts receivable. The other side goes to revenue. And then we're going to follow up and hopefully collect on those accounts receivable. The accounts receivable is what we're basically calling debts, right? It's an asset to us. It's debts to our customers, right? The debts that the customers owe to us. Then, of course, the question is, well, what happens if the customer doesn't pay us the accounts receivable that they owe us? That's what we call a bad debt on our end. And what are we going to do with it? Well, you would think we would have to negate the sale because we made a sale of bookkeeping services in our case and we increased revenue if we're using an accrual based system, but we didn't actually get paid. Therefore, you would think you would reduce the sales reversing that transaction, but we don't typically decrease sales. Instead, you might record it to an expense, which would be the bad debt expense. Now, this gets a little bit more messy if we use different kind of accounting methods to basically track bad debts. So if you have a cash based system, for example, if someone owes you money, you would not have paid it in the first place because you didn't get the money yet. And therefore, you wouldn't have anything to basically reverse because you never increased sales. Also, some bookkeeping systems uh, are going to use an allowance method to account for bad debts. And those are usually going to be larger type of businesses or businesses that are tracking more closely uh, their bad debts. That's the generally accepted accounting principle that will typically be applied to like large publicly traded uh, type of businesses, for example, and is a sound principle to use on smaller businesses, but it is more complicated uh, to, to deal with. And in that case, you would estimate the amount of money that you think is going to be bad debt. Now for taxes, of course, we have to use whatever the tax code is going to allow us to do with regards to the, the bad debts and when we can write them off. Okay, so uh, if someone owes you money, you cannot collect, you have a bad debt. So that usually happens when you have accounts receivable for a sale that you made in the past. The debt is the debt that the customer owes to you. It's their debt and they didn't pay you. That's what the bad debt is. Okay, there are two kinds of bad debt, business bad debt and non-business bad debt. So obviously we're focused here on the Schedule C. We could have a separate situation where we loaned someone money and you know we loaned debt, some deadbeat relative money or something and they didn't pay us back. Right? I knew they weren't going to pay us back when I gave us, I should have just called it a gift. I pretty much wrote, okay, in any case. That's going to that's obviously not going to be business related. So then we have to think about whether or not we can take that personal bad debt right off on like uh, somewhere on the personal side, like a schedule A. And typically there's going to be large restrictions in terms of whether or not we can write it off. It's a, if it's a personal bad debt, a business bad debt is generally one that comes from an operating uh, your trade or business, of course, it's related to your business, like accounts receivable. You may be able to deduct business bad debts as an expense on your business tax return, which you would think would be acceptable and fair, given the fact that it's business related bad debt. And if you recorded income, then you, you would think you would get the expense related to it if you didn't get the income, right? So business bad debt, a business bad debt is a loss from the worthlessness of a debt that was either of the following created or acquired in your business closely related to your business when it became uh, partly or totally worthless. So in other words, usually the bad debt is going to be created as part of the business. Like, for example, you did bookkeeping work, you invoiced the client and they owe you money and then they didn't pay you, right? That's usually what is going to be happening. But you can imagine scenarios where it's closely related to your business when it came partially or totally worthless. Okay, a debt is closely related to your business if your primary motive for incurring the debt is a business reason. So business uh, bad debt are mainly the result of credit sales to customers. In other words, sales on account. Or in other words, you do work, you invoice the client. If you're dealing with a bookkeeping system, 
where they have accounts receivable on the books, that's most likely because they're in an industry where they have to track accounts receivable. And that means that they're typically doing an accrual type thing when they with with their bookkeeping on the revenue side of things. So if they have QuickBooks, for example, or something like that, any accounting software, and they have accounts receivable, the software is almost certainly, most likely at least, recording income at the point in time they record an invoice, which is increasing the accounts receivable. So that means they're recognizing revenue when they increase accounts receivable or send the invoice, even though they did not yet get paid. And if you're using that income statement to input into the tax return, that means the revenue side is basically being calculated on an accrual method. And some of that revenue has not possibly been paid uh, them. Uh, in other words, there's timing differences with regards to, you know, the revenue and then when the cash was actually received. So they can also be result of loans to suppliers, clients, employees, or distributors. So we can also have debts that are that are resulting from loans that we we apply out. Who would we give a loan to? Possibly the suppliers, possibly our clients, right? We have clients that, that aren't uh, paying us. So we actually set up a loan for them. The difference between a loan and an accounts receivable is typically an accounts receivable is supposed to be paid within like 30 days or something like that usually, whereas a loan might have a more extended period and typically due to having a more extended period of time between payments or before payment, interest will typically be charged. Uh, and employees are another common place where you might give a loan to uh, and or distributors. Okay, so goods and services that customers have not paid are shown in your books as either accounts receivable or notes receivable. So from just a bookkeeping standpoint, what's going to happen when you make a sale on account, accounts receivable goes up, revenue is recognized at the point in time that accounts receivable goes up, even though you haven't yet got the money. If you loan someone money, whoever it may be, then cash is going to go out of the business, you're going to be giving them a loan. And the other side should be going to some kind of loan payable uh, account. Um, I mean, sorry, a receivable account, which again will be like an asset in a similar situation as accounts receivable. So if you are unable to collect any part of these accounts or uh, these accounts or notes receivable, the uncollectible part is a business bad debt. So then what if they don't pay you? That's when you have that bad debt that, that arises. Caution. So you can take a bad debt deduction for these accounts and notes receivable only if the amount you were owed was included in your gross income, either for the year the deduction is claimed or for a prior year. In other words, usually the accounting system, for example, when you enter an invoice, if you're using like QuickBooks or something, it's going to increase accounts receivable and the other side's going to go to revenue when you enter the invoice. Accounts receivable is an accrual account. What happens in the following year, let's say it happened next year, that they didn't pay you the accounts receivable for a sale that was made last year. Well, you, the, the, the justification for writing off the bad debt is that you recorded it in income last year, right? You recorded income even though you did not yet collect the money. So this year they owed you the money, uh, but they didn't pay you the money and you're, you've decided that you're never going to get the money. Well, that's what would justify writing off the expense because you recorded it in income last year, then you should be able to write it off as an expense uh, this year, which would be like a business uh, deduction. If you were on a cash-based system, and you were somehow still tracking the fact that you did work and they owed you money, but you weren't actually recording revenue at the point in time that you invoiced the client, in essence, when you did the work, which would be a little bit more of a funny kind of bookkeeping system because you would have to be tracking accounts receivable some way without recording revenue at the point in time that you earned it. But so you're trying to stay in a cash based system. In other words, even though you have a business that's kind of accrual based because you have to track accounts receivable, well, then you would have never recorded the, the receivable. And therefore, you don't get the deduction because you never recorded the revenue in the first place because you were using a cash based system. All right. Accrual method. So if you use an accrual method of accounting, you normally report income as you earn it. 
Now, again, if you have to track accounts receivable for a small business and you're using accounting software and you're tracking who owes you the money, then most likely the system is going to be recording revenue on an accrual based system. So, so that's just going to be the default typically. So you can uh, take bad debt deduction for an uncollectible receivable if you have included the uncollectible amount in income, which typically will be the case because you will have recorded it in income when accounts receivable went up because that's when you invoice the client. But if you're using a cashed method, if you use the cash method of accounting, you normally report income when you receive payment which again would be an unusual method method to use if you're in the type of business where you have to invoice the client and track the accounts receivable. Now, some software like a QuickBooks, for example, you can kind of toggle the accounting method between accrual and cashed method. So, so maybe you're still trying to do your taxes kind of on a cash method, even though you're tracking the accounts receivable and you're not recording uh, and you're recording revenue when you actually collect the cash. But if that were the case, then of course, you would have to use the cash method consistently. And, and that would mean that you would never have recorded the revenue when you invoice the client because, because you're on a cash-based method and you haven't yet received the cash, which means that if they never pay you, you don't get a deduction because you never recorded the income in the first place. So you cannot take a bad debt deduction for the amounts owed to you that you have not received and cannot collect if you never include those amounts in income. More information, please. More information about business bad debts, see section 166 and uh, its regulation. Non-business bad debt. All other bad debts are non-business bad debts and are uh, debts and are deductible as short-term capital losses on Form 8949 and uh, Schedule D. So if it's not business-related, then you're going to have to go to the personal side of things and see whether or not you can deduct it on a personal th side of thing, which is kind of like out of the scope of basically our concept here because our major thought process is those that are business-related. From our standpoint here, our major obstacle is to make sure that we can separate what is a business versus personal, which can be a little bit confusing uh, sometimes, but usually it's fairly clear with the bad debt, the people that owe us money. So for more information on non-business bad debts, you can see section 166 and its regulations. Now, the one thing we talked about an accrual method here, and we talked about a cash-based method, but also just want to point out that if you do accounting like courses, or if you deal with like some, some companies might use an allowance method, which is a method to try to try to uh, estimate the amount of bad debts that are are not going to be collectible. And so so that's not always going to be the case for small businesses. But again, if you have that kind of method, then you want to make sure that you're writing off bad debts in compliance uh, with the tax code. Because again, you would think that the IRS would be somewhat skeptical of estimations if they're estimates for taxes because then people could try to use estimations to basically over over write off or use timing adjustments of uh, the bad debt the basic methods that we've used here or thought about is basically a cash method system where you you would never have recorded the income and therefore you wouldn't have a deduction for bad debts and an accrual system which would be what we would call a direct write-off method where you're recording revenue, but you're not trying to estimate like how much of the revenue is not going to be collectible, uh, uh, but instead just trying to determine at some future point when a certain bad debt is not collectible and then write it off at that point in time. Whereas you can imagine the allowance method would basically say, hey, I might have some types of businesses where I have a lot of bad debt because I, I make a lot of sales and and in that type of industry, there's a certain amount of those sales that aren't going to be collectible. And I can basically estimate the amount of bad debt. And therefore, for reporting purposes to external uh, users, it would be useful to account for the bad debt so that I don't overstate my accounts receivable and my sales numbers when I know that there should be some part of that bad debt that is not going to be collectible. But I don't know exactly 
which part of that debt is not going to be collectible. So that, again, makes sense from a generally accepted accounting principle, but it's more complicated. So a lot of small businesses don't do it. And you can see why the IRS is going to be skeptical of methods like that, because it leads more towards estimates. So, so you would think that uh, you want to be in, if that comes up, you want to be in compliance with the tax code on that type of thing.